Um, so the first exercise, um, the first exercise that we are are undertaking is, um, as we mentioned before, is an understanding of housing need. Um, uh, so with this exercise, what we've, we've done is we've developed a series of um, personas or individuals, hypothetical individuals that 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 live in West Nipissing. Um, these are individuals that are different at different socioeconomic stages, different stages of the, their lives. Um, and this is to help us understand better the types of, 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 of the types of housing solutions that exist in, in West Nipissing currently or the issues and challenges that certain individuals living in the community may have in finding housing. So to that end, there's three different types of questions that we're really asking you to look at. And you don't need to answer each question with each individual, uh, it, it, pardon me, hypothetical um, individual, um, but really, really just to give some general thoughts to you. When you're looking at these different households, what do you think are their top considerations when looking for a new home in, in West Nipissing? Additionally, what do you think they would need for their own households to be successful and where would they want to live in West Nipissing? That could be in Sturgeon Falls, it could be one of the outlying communities, it could be in downtown Sturgeon Falls, et cetera. And then we'd also like you to give some thoughts to what are the biggest challenges that you see when these individuals and these households will be looking for housing in West Nipissing? So this is a bit of a rapid fire exercise, and the way that we're going to tackle this is we're going to read out the scenario or the, 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 the situation that these individuals live in. And we're just going to ask for some of the initial thoughts off the top of your head. And you're welcome to, again, share those in the chat that Guillaume will be monitoring. Um, you're welcome to kind of unmute yourself and raise your hand if you'd like to say something or just shout out some answers as well, too. And we'll try to record as much as possible. Again, it isn't to, intended to be an exercise where we go methodically through each question, but if you could just give some thought to what these individuals may be looking for, what kind of challenges they may face, and what, what kind of home they're going to need um, to, to thrive, survive and thrive in West Nipissing. So um, the first... Sorry, ahead, sorry, Bob, well. <laughs> I no. just thought uh, maybe I could uh, read out Absolutely. the questions in French just for people who would appreciate that. Um, donc, euh, Paul fait une excellente introduction, alors je vais juste euh, réitérer que euh, les euh, études de cas vont être aussi décrites en français et euh, je vais en pr présenter quelques-unes aussi. Alors, euh, c'est un exercice vraiment pour débuter la conversation. Nous sommes ici pour vous écouter et apprendre de, de vos réponses, de vos réflexions. Alors, on, vous, on va vouloir vous entendre si possible sur... Euh, pour chaque type de famille, de foyer, de personnes, quels seraient leurs critères de sélection, leurs préoccupations pour choisir un domicile, quel genre de domicile ou de type d'habitation aurait-il besoin euh, et où voudraient-ils vivre à, à Nipissing West et enfin, quels seraient leurs plus grands défis pour trouver un logis convenable à Nipissing West. Thank you so much, Mally. And you kind of got the impression that my, myself and Mally were going to tag team these exercises exercises. And again, so you, you'll hear from me in English, you'll hear from Mali in French, but really at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that you're able to communicate in, 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 in the manner that you feel most comfortable in. And we're certainly happy to record and, and, and take your answers or ideas or questions in either language. So with that, we'll jump into the first uh, household that we're looking at. And this is, this is uh, Robert and Sophie. Uh, so Robert and Sophie are a young couple. Uh, they're are planning on starting a family in the next couple of years. Uh, Robert is a carpenter and Sophie is a teacher. Their combined annual income is $105,000, but this can fluctuate based on the amount of work that Robert has. And Sophie is still paying off her student debt. So she has a little bit of debt that she's still managing. Again, if we were looking at this couple, and this is an open discussion, so we're hoping that people will come up and throw out some ideas to share. But if you were Robert and Sophie, or you were in their shoes, what kind of house would you be looking for? What kind of challenges do you think a couple like Robert and Sophie would have finding housing in West Nipissing? Is there a brave soul who would like to offer an idea first? <laughs> oh, I see Bruno. If you'd like to unmute yourself, Bruno, and share.
Well, Bruno, if you're speaking, I'm not sure if we can hear you. You might be. Uh, you look oh, like sorry, I had to. Double, yep, you're good I to go. Double, double muted myself there. I apologize. Um, I not just wanted to preface that uh, my name is Bruno Lepage. I'm the chair of economic development. So I want to preface that before we start answering the question. So um, part of the uh, committee that selected the project. Um, so I think a young couple like that would most likely be looking for something in the mid twos to low threes, uh, $100,000 range, to something that's affordable, couple of bedrooms. Um, I think at this point in the current economy in Sturgeon Falls, um, the type of product that would be of in that price range probably needs a bit of TLC or depending on the, the location, but it's still mm -hmm. reachable, but it's, it's becoming uh, very difficult to find at this point. So I think that they would find it difficult or they could be in transitional housing or apartments until they get to the point where they do find the location. So if they were relocating to the community, I would think a, most likely a two bedroom type of apartment or um, a little bit more dense housing uh, would be something that they would also be a viable option. Great. Thanks so much for that, Bruno. Uh, Guillaume, I, I think a few people were entering some answers into the chat. Are you able to share those answers? And then I'm going to jump over to Anne's got her hand up. Yes, sure. So uh, Jocelyn said that uh, Br Robert and Sophie would look for uh, home ownership, affordability, and living within their means. And uh, Chris said the challenge number one is extracting money from their rich retired parents or grandparents. <laughs> and Joanne talks about availability and the pricing. That's great. Thanks so much for that, guys. And Anne, I'll turn the mic over to you if you'd like to share your thoughts. Yeah, um, I'm looking at with a young family um, location close to the school. As far mm -hmm. as location for the children. Um, and then the rest is already mentioned about the financial and whatnot. I just want to, to add where in West Nipissing. So, um, wherever there's a school close by the outskirts um i don't know if like in sturgeon falls compared to the outskirts what the um how much it costs to buy a house i'm not sure uh, the difference that could be mm -hmm. something to consider as well the location and that's about it that's, that's wonderful thanks for that Anne. If there are no other ideas or thoughts on this one, we can certainly go to to our, our next household and I'm going to pass the mic over for, for Mally to, oh, I think we had one other uh, idea, Suzanne mentioned availability. It, Guillaume, could you help me out with Suzanne, Suzanne's comments? Yes, yes, for sure. S Suzanne said availability of options and rent to own. And Chris G. R. just said, in all seriousness though, pricing is going to be a probable problem if there's still buyers overbidding. They may need to rent until the market cools down some more. Thanks for that, guys. No, that's much appreciated. And again, it's probably worth reiterating again, one of the primary focuses of, of this particular exercise, probably unsurprisingly, does relate to housing affordability. So, so we do appreciate those comments um, around around the, the affordability issues that 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 these different households may may face. So with that, we're going to jump over to our next household and I'm going to pass the mic over to Mali to talk to us about uh, Christine and Danielle. Thank you, Paul. Uh, yes, donc Christine and Danielle, on parle encore d'une famille à bas âge. Donc Christine est mère monoparentale, elle vient de déménager à Nipissing West de Sudbury avec son fils pour se rapprocher de son travail. Elle gagne un revenu de 60 000 par année comme hygiéniste dentaire, mais malgré son emploi à temps plein, malgré son bon crédit, Christine doit débourser seule les services de garde spécialisés pour son fils qui a des besoins, euh, des besoins particuliers. Alors, euh, compte tenu qu'elle est une mère monoparentale, qu'elle doit assumer toutes les dépenses pour son fils, donc on vous demande en, encore une fois si vous voulez vous mettre à la place de Christine Quelles seraient à sa place vos préoccupations pour choisir un domicile? Quels seraient ses critères de sélection? Euh, par exemple, proximité des services de garde pour son fils ou proximité de son emploi. Euh, quel type d'habitation aurait-elle besoin pour elle et son fils? 
un logement, une maison unifamiliale, par exemple, et où voudrait-elle vivre à Nipissing West? Et quel, genre, quel serait ce, le plus grand défi dans sa recherche pour un logis? Alors, dans la situation très particulière de, de Christine, est-ce que des personnes voudraient se lancer pour de, partager leurs réflexions euh, sur sa situation en particulier? Soit par le chat, soit en intervenant directement sur votre micro. Either brave souls would like to offer some thoughts on Christine and Daniel. Est-ce que vous l'imaginez euh, vivre en, en milieu urbain ou plus en milieu rural? Nous avons Lise, euh, Lise Mallette qui voudrait s'exprimer. Allô, so, ça dépend. M'entendez-vous? Oui. OK. So, ça dépend tout des de besoins de l'enfant. Euh, moi aussi, j'ai un enfant qui a besoin. Et puis, si tu parles de des besoins pour l'enfant, si c'est comme sur, si sont sourds ou aveugles, Sturgeon Falls n'est juste pas une bonne place pour cet enfant-là. Ils n'ont pas les spécialistes, ils n'ont pas les professionnels. On n'est juste pas assez gros ici. Euh, mm. Moi, je, si ça serait ça les problèmes de l'enfant, je ne recommanderais pas Sturgeon. Nous mm. autres, le, le note, il, il est sourd, il est aveugle, puis c'est toujours comme pour les sourds, c'est les écoles spécialisées à Ottawa. Euh, si ça serait en anglais, ça serait plus vers Toronto. Puis si pour les aveugles, tu regardes les villes plus comme Sudbury, où ils ont de la transportation, ils ont des services, ils ont des professionnels, il n'y a pas rien ici. Mm. C'est une très bonne euh, intervention, merci. Oui. Et donc, euh, de votre... Oui, pardon. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead, Mally. I was just pointing out, I think we had a couple answers in the chat, but I didn't mean to interrupt right. you, Mally. Sorry. No, go ahead. What do we have in the chat? Well, I can speak for the chat. Jocelyn said rental close to daycare, accessible rental, and the challenge is having access to the care for the specialized needs. So uh, a bit like... Uh, The, the lady Lise that just, just spoke, said, yes. <laughs> yes, just Lise mm -hmm. just said, mm -hmm. it's a bit similar. Mm -hmm. Joanne said, there are hardly any rentals may have to live in North Bay and travel till they can find a place. And uh, yes, Jocelyn just said, good point, Lise. <laughs> <laughs> Chris also just uh, message. He said, I'd argue moving from Sudbury was a huge mistake based on available services to add to what Liz was saying. I know people here who drive to Sudbury on a weekly basis for specialized health care. And uh, Larissa just commented, she wouldn't likely find a rental in her price range. She would have to wait a long time to find something. Might be better to commute. So that's Great. what we have here. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. Merci tout le monde. Merci, Lise. Merci pour vos interventions. It's wonderful, guys. Thanks. So the next individual we want to talk about is Yves. So Yves recently turned 85, and he's lived in West Nipissing his whole life. His wife passed away six years ago, and his children live with their families in Ottawa, and he no longer has a car. His annual income is approximately $24,000, which he receives from his old age security pension, as well as the pension that he received when he worked at the mill. So again, just like our previous households, just looking for some thoughts about um, any of the, the, the issues or challenges that somebody like Eve would have finding housing in, in West Nipissing, um, and, or, 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 or any ideas about where Eve would be, would be looking to live um, at this stage in his life. And again, you're welcome to use the chat boxes, welcome to raise hand or to call out an answer or an idea. Bruno? All right, make sure I'm not muted. Excellent. Um, I think Eve and similarly to the other scenario before, um, location will have will play a, a significant factor uh, for mobility reasons or access to services within the, uh, the region. Um, so I think at this point that would concentrate the housing requirement most likely within the Sturgeon Falls area, uh, just through proximity for uh, 
um, food and uh, access to services such as the hospital and, and other whatnot, uh, which is currently very lacking in um, uh, with no transportation, taxi services, or that's not really concrete. We have a few um, other services that are picking up the, the the gap right now, but there's not a very good strategic plan on, on mobility for those individuals that no longer have vehicles or those types of families that are still in the process of trying to acquire vehicles. So uh, it makes it difficult for Eve, the scenario of Eve or others that may not be able to get to and from uh, certain areas. So. Appreciate those thoughts. That's great. So we have a couple of, uh, yes, we have some uh, people uh, discussing in the chat. Suzanne said uh, that Eve will soon need more care and unless he put his name at the uh, Chateau, at the, sorry, it's the uh, Chateau, <laughs> seven to 10 years ago, he will soon need more care than is currently available. Uh, Chris said Eve is going to likely be forced to live in North Bay since O Chateau is full right now. Sadly, not sure if your continuum includes retirement care, but that might be an important part of it. It does include it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and just like I said, best to say, best to stay in his home if he owns one. Long waiting list for senior housing, Aka au Chateau. Uh, the challenge would be to convince him to move to Ottawa and live with his family. <laughs> and Joanne said, some people have rooms to rent that could be an option. And I see we have uh, Suzanne has put her hand up. Suzanne, if you'd like to share some thoughts. Oh, yes. So I am in a situation with my mother who's 94 and now living in North Bay because there's nothing in Sturgeon. She has Alzheimer's and there was uh, she's had her name at the Oshato only four years. So she's not really. Um, but anyway, so she's in a retirement home where she should be in a nursing home. And mm -hmm. I, I know that the, the population in West Nipissing is quite, is aging very fast and there will be a crisis soon. I'm looking for um, a lot of the people my age, which I'm 69, in 10 years, we will be looking for retirement homes. And there, if there's nothing in Sturgeon, we'll all be going to elsewhere, to North Bay or which is really sad because we lived all our lives in Sturgeon as my mother, and now she's stuck in 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 an anglophone uh, retirement home when she's very francophone because there is nothing around here. So I think I I, I empathize with all the younger people looking for uh, houses and all that, but the, the fact is that there's a lack of, um, of uh, vision for uh, the baby boomers that are going to be needing retire uh, alternative, not just uh, um, long-term care home, but retirement homes and uh, alternative levels of care from you know very independent to less independent. And in 10 years time, it's going to be like a, a tsunami of, uh, of uh, elderly people. Appreciate really appreciate those thoughts, Suzanne. And 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 you know, just as Guillaume had mentioned, you know, certainly as a part of this exercise and the strategy, is we will be looking at issues around home for the aged, those that are independent living, as well as those that need um, some assistance and may want to be in more of a seniors community to those that actually do need assisted or long-term care. So really appreciate those thoughts and sharing your story. Thank you. Merci, Suzanne. Merci. Uh, and uh, for the chat, uh, Isabel said maybe shared accommodation with other senior and Joanne said or another retired person younger. It could be a temporary option and a big help to an elderly person. It depends on his health and needs. Thanks so much for those thoughts. So with that, we'll move on to our, our last um, our last uh, household that we'll be looking at. And I'm going to pass the mic back over to Mali um, to tell us a little bit about Charles' story. Oui, donc voici Charles qui est un jeune adulte qui a eu une jeunesse difficile. Donc, il a grandi dans des familles d'accueil et euh, a peu de contact avec sa famille biologique. Euh, il se sort de problèmes de dépendance, il est sobre depuis deux ans et occupe un emploi ouvrier pour financer son retour aux études. 
Par contre, il gagne 34 000 par année et il ne détient pas encore de permis de conduire. Alors, euh, on vous relance euh, euh, avec les mêmes questions. Euh, quelles sont vos réflexions à propos de la situation de Charles? Est-ce qu'il pourrait trouver une habitation qui euh, lui convient à Nipissing West? Euh, ce serait quoi ses préoccupations? Ce serait quoi ses critères de sélection? Est-ce que ce serait proximité de son travail? Euh, N'ayant pas de permis de conduire, où serait le meilleur endroit pour lui euh, à, à vivre à Nipissing West? Est-ce que ce serait plus en milieu urbain, Sturgeon Falls, ou plus en milieu rural? Euh, est-ce que vous le voyez plus en logement, en maison unifamiliale? Et quel, quel serait son plus grand défi pour trouver un, un logis qui lui convient? Alors, on a une situation un peu plus différente des, des trois derniers euh, cas. Euh, on aimerait vous entendre au niveau de vos réflexions, vos idées, vos opinions. Il n'y a pas de mauvaise réponse. Le chat est toujours disponible si vous préférez écrire ou si vous voulez intervenir directement. Nous avons Anne qui voudrait partager ses réflexions. Ah, oui, moi, je, je vois avec euh, la transportation. S'il travaille, s'il ne conduit pas, il n'y a pas de moyen de transportation à moins qu'il connaisse quelqu'un qui peut voyager avec. Ce serait un des, des gros défis, là, parce que comme on a indiqué tantôt, il n'y a pas de taxi ou des choses comme ça. Il n'y a pas d'autobus. Ah, mm. C'est un gros défi. Donc, le transport en commun est un défi euh, oui. pour lui. Même s'il est en hors, oui. Soit qu'il soit à, à Sturgeon Falls ou à l'extérieur de Sturgeon Falls, il n'y a pas de moyen de transportation à moins qu'il fait des arrangements avec euh, des gens d'autour. OK. Merci, Anne. Et prenons. Oui, bonjour. Euh, je vais faire ça en, en anglais. Je ne sais pas si le groupe peut faire en anglais. Là. Um, as an employer in the community of that generation or the 20-year-old in that segment, um, I, I do see a lot of our employees that are having a significant difficulty in acquiring any type of housing within the proximity to employment. So uh, we have to remind that so the West Nipissing is a very large geographic area. Uh, with limited transportation between the different uh, um, municipalities. And right now, somebody in that income bracket is, is having nearly, finding it nearly impossible. I mean, I've advocated quite frequently for some of our employees to try to find housing. And there's just a significant lack of any type of uh, apartment or single bedroom apartment or that kind of studio uh, apartment. I recall my, my youth living in that, kind of bachelor apartment where you have like your kitchen and your bedroom almost in the same place, but but there's there's none of that available right now to give an opportunity to these individuals to be able to transition or at least be able to retain employment to make the steps necessary in order to get their um, their careers or their their, their lives on, on, on track. Um, it, honestly, like I've witnessed a lot of employees that are currently uh, living with family. Thank God they have a car because they're having to live in the outskirts of field to travel to Sturgeon. But if it wasn't for that transportation, I have individuals working with us right now that unfortunately have to walk from Cash Bay to Sturgeon to try to have employment um, just because of the affordability. So we're seeing a significant challenge right now um, for transportation and for that micro apartment, affordable apartment for that, that income bracket. It's just practically non-existent or I just haven't found it for them yet. That's really interesting. You're Thank offering you. us a systemic view of how it impacts the employment in the area and, you know, the um, relationships with uh, between employers Absolutely. and employees and the challenges for retaining um, employees as well. So thank you for that. Yeah, just to add to that, like some of the employers in the community have thought about um, trying to buy uh, apartments if we could to just even house. It's, it's become so systemic that it's, it's so difficult, but then there's legal re repercussions with it, with the employment contracts and so on. But just to say that that's how far people are trying to go almost to, to think about this. Mm -hmm. To hire. Very interesting. Okay. Um, Guillaume, I see we've got something in the chat and then I also see we've got a hand up from Chris. But Guillaume, do you want to share? Yeah, sure. Jocelyn said yes. Uh, oh, that was for the other part, sorry. Uh, he could search for housing 
with mental health housing, rent a room, find roommates to share rental. He would need to live closer to downtown uh, or close to his workplace. Rideshare is a possibility. As for college, he would probably need to move closer to college since he doesn't drive. And Joanne just commented, his past makes it difficult because it's a small town and many landlords are vetting uh, more closely and choosing to rent to those without the past. Also, there is no help for people his age. Apartments are overpriced. Although challenging, he could rent a room or move to a city where more housing is available. Thanks for those thoughts. Je crois que nous avions aussi une main levée euh, de, de Chris, mais peut-être que Chris a, a finalement... Euh, Chris, est-ce que vous voulez toujours intervenir? Est-ce que vous voulez toujours partager euh, vos idées? Uh, yeah, just to kind of give a little bit of perspective, actually, because, I mean, I'm mm. not too, too far off from that particular situation. I mean, I'm 31 and making eh, not too, too much more than what uh, Shell is making. Uh, this is about what was it now four years ago now so this is back in 2018 i had to live at my parents place for about four to six months before i was able to find the unit that i'm currently living in now and that was in 2018 so i live in sturgeon i work in sturgeon and i had a vehicle at that time and without the whole past that shall has uh you know good references for renting and and and, and all the everything it was still a four to six month wait of me living at my parents place just until something that was reasonable came up and again this is in 2019 or 2018 so mm -hmm. i can't imagine what it's like right now you have a feeling that the situation would be, would be worse these days is that oh, un undoubtedly worse okay mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Thank you for sharing, Chris. Yeah, very much. Yeah, and my parents are local, exactly, unlike Shal. So again, it's, unlike Shal, I'm I'm a block from where I was living at my parents' place. It just kind of worked out that way wow. in my current apartment, you know. But again, really, really, I I got lucky, you know. Yeah. And now yeah. it's worse. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank Appreciate you so that. much for pointing that out. Yeah. And uh, Guillaume, is, is there anything else in the chat? Otherwise, we're kind of right on schedule, and we can go on to the and go on to the next exercise. But is there any 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 last minute thoughts in the chat there, Guillaume? No, as Isabel said, uh, <laughs> uh, the last person that uh, talked had parents local, unlike Charles. So yeah, great. No, really appreciate the. I really appreciate the the thoughts um, and kind of that rapid fire exercise um, and everyone. And 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 again, the, you know, at the end of the day, the, the 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 point of that particular exercise was two part. It's kind of there to get us to think outside the box about what different types of housing needs we need in the community. But you know, I I think it was really awesome that 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 that, that this group was able to see themselves or family and friends. Um, mm. in some of these scenarios and to be able to offer some of those personal experiences and personal stories about struggles that they've had and challenges that they've had. Um, and, and it's also, and I won't take away from, from Bruno's comments as well too, about the impacts, um, the economic impacts and the challenges that employers are also finding as well. So that's really appreciate those thoughts, everyone. So for the next exercise that we're going to go through, we're going to go um, um, into a roundtable discussion, a table ronde. Um, and just like we've gone um, um, through, uh, the, uh, through the understanding of housing need, um, myself and Mali, we're going to tag team this exercise. Um, again, you're more than welcome to share your answers, thoughts or ideas, either in French or in English, and, and we're here to, to enable that. Um, so we're going to walk through three large questions um, that 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 uh, the big ticket questions that um, that we have. And again, so I'll bring them up on the screen. They're very simple. If you could give some thought to them, um, and then just like we've done before, you're welcome to share your ideas in chat. You're welcome to raise your hand and 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 share your idea verbally or ask any questions, etc. So we'll jump right into it. The first one we've got for everybody is we're looking for you to help us finish this sentence. I wish my community had housing that is blank. And again, we'll just open it up to the floor. Did anybody like to finish this sentence? 
in West Nipissing, I wish we had housing that is what? Donc, en français, je voudrais que ma communauté offre des habitations. Trois petits points. We're seeing some action in the chat already, which is great. Guillaume, if you wouldn't mind sharing some of those. Yes, people are commenting. Uh, people are saying affordable, uh, that is available for more price points, uh, higher density, as in uh, not a slum house. <laughs> Chris commented. <laughs> So yes, uh, people are writing in chat. Great. I see more in the chat there. Yep, safe and affordable. Could help to attract new employees in the community. We have Joanne that says transitional housing. Uh, Isabel saying newer, not a fire hazard. Hazard, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Develop well, new housing well. as fast as we are losing it to fires and housing being condemned. Fire retrofit. So we're seeing, I'm going to pick on some of these because I'm seeing a bit of a theme around kind of like well-maintained issues around fire or safety. Uh, is there anybody who would like to maybe expand on any of those points or, 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 you know, and maybe discuss some of the kind of the issues that they, that, that they, that they, that they're seeing related to that or expand on any of those ideas? There's also other ideas that are coming in. Great. So we're yeah. talking about housing for young people singles and couples housing with a uh, that uh, comprises a variety of options such as condo co-op housing retirement homes uh, a housing that is accessible in terms of getting in and out for people with disabilities and health issues again mm -hmm. for young single people to attract mm -hmm. new uh, immigrants and uh, just people in general Wonderful. Hey, Isabel, I saw that you put your hand up, but maybe put it down. Yeah, please share with yeah. OK, I just wanted to say that, um, of course, most of the people here, and I don't know, maybe this will help you with your study as well, but uh, we, the housing, some of the housing losses that we've had over recent years have been rather spectacularly reflective of uh, rundown establishments. Uh, people living in motels, motels uh, getting shut down because of health reasons, mm -hmm. fires. Um, so those things, um, you know, right in the core of our downtown, uh, we lost uh, uh, quite a few rental units uh, just a few years ago, and it was right beside uh, where I work. And uh, all, all those people, uh, you know, the Red Cross is great. They step in and help out, but all those people, um, you know, when you're living in those kind of housing, uh, generally speaking, uh, a significant number of those people aren't local. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're they're struggling and they don't have family supports. So uh, it's just puts more pressure on the system whenever we have a situation like this. I don't know um, what can be done about that. But I also, at the same time, you know, uh, I have been reading about this other remarkable thing that's happening in Canada. It's recently recorded that we have more single people uh, living alone in Canada than ever before in recorded Canadian history. Mm -hmm. um, and a significant number of those people are people that are actually living in houses by themselves. So I'm just thinking, um, you know, if, if you're looking like, uh, 15, 20 years, uh, we may have to reform our entire structures, um, social structures, and how we accommodate people and also support people that might want to look into things like shared accommodation. I mean, I'd be in the same situation as a house owner, as an apartment owner, when it comes to wanting to uh, vet the person that I would share my accommodation with. So I'm just, it's a very long-winded way of saying that there are opportunities there and there are people that are willing to share, but 
uh, the way our society is currently structured, we don't know who we're letting into our homes and we don't know who we're letting into our apartments. Um, and, and it's not to be discriminatory, but uh, the person who has the home or the apartment gets to make the choice. No, this is some this is some insightful comments, Isabel. And you know, in the, one of the comments I would make to this particular group, particularly because of the nature of the the, the comments we're receiving, kind of around these issues of safety, um, of, of of property standards, etc., is I wouldn't want to. And I, you know, these are some of the actions and ideas. Explore for the municipality when we're developing the strategy as well. They could involve things like a more robust program of fire inspections. They could involve beefing up um, um, and, and making recommendations around beefing up uh, property standards um, um, and, and building standards regulations in the municipality. Um, because particularly when we do get into situations like we are in now, not just in West Nipissing, but across the country where we are essentially facing a housing crisis, this is where we do find people end up in much more precarious housing uh, uh, positions than 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 ever before, um, where people are living in, whether they're living in vehicles, whether they're living in, in motels or hotels. Housing and unsafe housing is, is, is a real challenge. Um, so it's uh, again, I just I, I want to make sure that those those comments around that are 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 noted because they 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 they, they will feed into some of the strategies that we can certainly look at at West Nipissing. Guillaume, I, I think we had a couple other people enter some information in the chat. Would you mind uh, sharing with us? Yeah, for sure, Paul. Uh, let me just uh, two second. So we're talking again about higher density housing with a mixed type of housing. For, so for example, a bachelor, one bedroom, two bedroom apartments, so smaller uh, apartments. Mm, we're talking about P uh, Lee said that we should reward landlords. There should be incentives. Uh, and consequences, so the both ways. Great. So that pretty much is it, yeah. Great. And I see we've got Joanne that said, oh, oh. So, oh, sorry, I was just about to add that. Joanne said they allow people uh, on welfare $387 a month for rent with utilities included. How do people rent at that rate? And with yeah. many with mental health and addiction problems, it is difficult to heal a housing and homeless crisis. Yeah, no, that's a very insightful comment. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I see we've got a couple hands up. We're, maybe we'll turn to KT and then we'll go over to Anne. But KT, if you'd like to start. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to touch back on when, when you were talking about uh, inspections and and making sure buildings were safe. I, I think the only issue that comes into that is when when the housing is mostly in private hands, anything that there uh, that landlords are ordered to do to improve their property to make it livable will end up being reflected in increased rents. I mean, that's just the way the the private market system works, and and I think that's where the challenge of safe, both safe and affordable, comes in because. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the losses that we've had in the community. I mean, we lost. I'm going to think it was about 14 units in the last month um, on fires. And um, you know, like I say, as soon as you you add in any kind of regulatory burden that affects the the private sector landlords, um, that's going to be reflected in the rents, and then it prices people out of the market, and they they still become you know housing insecure. And that's just all I wanted to add on that point. Thank you. No, thanks so much for the for for those comments. It's you know there is the uh, the old adage of the 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 rule of unintended consequences. Um, and so when we do when we are looking at developing these strategies, those are some of the issues that we are going to have to examine um, around a, around you know in balancing out some of the strategies and actions that we propose. But that, that that's that's very much appreciated. And then I think we had Anne next. Uh, yes, I've noticed um, with elderly like people, 
that they like to be close to family. So that might be a little bit off topic, but I just want to mention it that um, granny, is it they're called granny house. So on the same yeah. property, they have their house and then a smaller house for the grandparents. And I think that would be great, especially uh, in the farming areas where I came across a situation where um, the grandmother lost her husband. So they, she had built a house for her size, like 900 square feet. And now members of her family, younger generation with children want to bring back the farm alive. But now mm -hmm. they want to build a house, but because of bylaws, they can't build a bigger house to have a family with children. So, I mean, mm -hmm. again, you talked about changing possibly regulations and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but I think because if you have that type of house like that, then the generation is the parents who's taking care of the grandparents. Eventually, they're going to have that same situation. So there could be a rollover, whether it's grandparents or um, their kids wanting to have their own place. Then having that unit, two units there, it, it's and then the families together as well. So I, I found that interesting having that that type of yeah. uh, dwelling. No, I appreciate those comments. And you know, it's it's so a, a few years ago, the province in particular really, really loosened up the rules with re with regards to permitting um, second dwellings on properties or, you know, whether we call them granny suites or secondary suites or basement apartments, they go by a bunch of different names um, that can allow, particularly for multi-generational families or, you know, passive income through renting to, to through renting to, to, to other households. Um, and, and quite often what we've seen across the, across the province when those rules were changed is municipalities are in this game of attempting to play catch up with their own policies and regulations so they were so they allow for these permissions so certainly revisiting some of those bylaws and policies related to that could be some of the very some very key recommendations that um, that will likely be made in, in in the strategy so really appreciate you raising those uh, those thoughts and ideas Guillaume did we have anything else popped into the chat there Yes, so we had a Chris that said, I may be mistaken, but I've heard that only buildings built before a certain date are under rent control. So my concern is that new construction would be deemed unreliable to rent since the landlord would be able to ra raise the rents by astronomical amounts on a whim. Also, Larissa said, that uh, we should have more opportunities for smaller homes, tiny homes, and uh, friendly homes, uh, or I think it's homes for friends. Uh, mm -hmm. Not for everyone, but would be nice for those owning land or having large backyards. Also, Joanne said, sorry, I'm just scrolling. Maybe a fund to make private apartments available to subsidies. For example, rent at a one bedroom is 850. The person is low income and can only pay four hundred dollars. The subsidy would cover the rest, kind of like income geared housing, but in the private sector. That's great. Isabel also talked about uh, her situation. She said, my parents lived with us. Granny flat mobile home on the property joined by deck. As Joanne okay. said in Kitchener, I believe they converted sea cans into livable housing. So that's it. That's interesting. I, and I'm going to pause on that one because I believe um, I believe there's actually a CCAN conversion project. This it was explained to me by municipal staff. There's a CCAN conversion project actually in Sturgeon Falls in West Nipissing. Um, and I, when we were driven by that facility, it's certainly if you saw it, you wouldn't you wouldn't in a million years think that the buildings were created um, and uh, for uh, out of sea cans, but it was a really, really cool conversion. And I think uh, I think Isabel just noted that it was for indigenous housing. So I, I'm, I'm not mistaken because I, I think that was the project that was explained so that uh, it was really wonderful to see some of those more innovative building techniques, um, particularly ones that are kind of adaptive, reusing some of these surplus surplus materials that we see in our in our community for 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 quality housing. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And uh, Suzanne says that she agrees with the granny flats or garden homes that could offer extra housing. 
So I can continue uh, or we can go uh, to the next question. I, you know what, I'm going to suggest that just in the interest of time and then just for everybody that's been entering their, their ideas into the chat again, we are recording them, but in the interest of time, maybe we'll move on to the ne next discussion point. We are kind of like spot on in our agenda, so we'll see if we can keep up our streak here. But again, just want to extend a huge thanks to everybody as we get going into the round table and we've got two more questions we'd like to to review with everybody discussion topics. Just really want to thank everybody for the ideas they've already shared. This has really been a rich discussion so far and I truly mean that. So I'm going to pass the mic over to my colleague Mally who's going to walk us through our next big question. So Mally, I'll hand the mic over to you. Thank you. Oui, merci vraiment beaucoup tout le monde. C'est euh, une superbe conversation. Vous apportez tellement des points intéressants. Euh, donc bravo tout le monde puis on, on veut continuer à vous entendre là-dessus. Alors, le deuxième exercice pour la table ronde, c'est un exercice de, de visualisation. Euh, donc, nous vous encourageons à faire un exercice où euh, vous vous projetez dans le futur dans une vingtaine d'années. Donc, imaginez que vous êtes en 2042, dans un monde idéal. Vous sortez de chez vous, vous vous promenez à travers euh, votre communauté, à pied ou en voiture. Dites-nous, partagez avec nous, qu'est-ce que vous voyez? Qu'est-ce que vous aimeriez voir en 2042 à Nipissing West? Euh, qu'est-ce que vous remarquez autour de vous? Plus précisément, comment les habitations se sont-elles améliorées euh, depuis 20 ans? Et euh, donc, que voyez-vous en matière d'habitation en 2042? On a déjà Isabelle, euh, plus tôt, qui avait apporté des... Euh, des réflexions intéressantes sur euh, les euh, Canadiens qui vivent de plus en plus seuls et qu'il faudrait euh, restructurer la, les, les habitations en conséquence et qui avaient peut-être euh, des euh, gros défis à ce sujet. Donc, dans un monde idéal, en 2042, Annie Pissing West, qu'est-ce que vous voyez autour de vous en termes d'habitation? Any ideas? Anybody want to take a first stab at that one? Oh, Suzanne. Je vais parler en anglais parce que tout le monde va le comprendre. I think uh, I see in a few years that the park, the uh, old uh, mill uh, property has become a multi-generational um, complex with uh, retirement living, um, duplexes, uh, townhouses for different ages, but also affordable. And that um, by creating a retirement home mixed with a multi-generational, uh, it offers um, a chance for the uh, youth to interact with the um, inter intergenerational um, um, benefits. So, it, mm. um, I think not to sequester or, or not to uh, put the seniors all in one place, but to have different generations so that the, the youth can interact, the, the children can interact with seniors. Also, by creating uh, retirement homes and different levels of care, uh, it will increase um, uh, uh, jobs and businesses will, will profit. So I think it would be also attracting a little bit like uh, Elliot Lake that has a retirement, strong retirement home, a retirement mm -hmm. community. It will attract uh, maybe, uh, because there's not a lot of businesses in Sturgeon, but it would attract seniors that would like to, uh, you know, live out their years in a nice community like Nipissing West, which has, um, or Nipissing that has a lot of uh, uh, very good um, services here already. So. I think um, if in 20 years that becomes, that would be great. Well, I, I'm curious to know what kind of um, uh, the benefits that you would like to share. Do you think it would raise the social resilience, for example, if you, if we had uh, multi-generational centers, um, you mentioned the old mill site, for example. Um, do you think it would yes, so 
Yeah. Well, do you think it would improve the overall um, social resi resilience of the community if there were more intergenerational um, housings, for example? I think so. I, I think it would be great to do more, um, to put the seniors all in one spot. Well, mm. you know, it doesn't teach the young people to uh, interact with seniors and the seniors uh, really like to interact with young people or so i think it would be good not to mm. just use that area for for seniors but to have mm. a uh, to have mix a, it up a, a setup that would be you know uh, accessible lots of sidewalks lots of um, uh, i don't know i think it there there are some existing models that could be looked at and copied and uh, used in that area and that would uh, create jobs to attract more people um create and the like when i sell my house that'll be a house for somebody a young family so i know so many people who are living in in a house three four bedroom house like isabel said all by themselves and they're not uh, you know renting out a room because when my children come, I want to have room for them, but uh, I'd say 50 weeks out of uh, 52, my house is empty with just one person. So when I sell my house, that'll be another house that's available for a family. And so uh, if all the uh, seniors my age, I'm a baby boomer, if we're all moving into a, like a townhouse, uh, I need my own garage, but a townhouse, then that, uh, that liberates a lot of single family homes that will become available for um, families. That's a very good point, yeah. So you mm -hmm. see, um, again, a systemic vision of how it will improve the um, housing mobility, the housing, um, the yes, inventory. We, that's uh -huh. right. When the seniors move into um, uh, more uh, adapted housing, like a, a townhouse or something where they don't have to cut the, mow the lawn and all that, then uh, that will liberate a lot of single family homes that will that are right now uh, filled with with single people that are not um, that are way too big for the for the those persons. And I can I know out of just I could tell you 10 out of just out of the top of my head, uh, the people I know, lots of widows and but they're holding on to their houses because they can still manage. And but in the 10 years, these houses will be up for sale and that will uh, create a lot of more housing. Great. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, that was very enlightening. Thank you. Anybody else Guillaume, would like to yeah. uh, contribute? Well, I believe there's another uh, raised hand, if I'm not mistaken. I see Chris. Yes. Hey, um, yeah, so I've been reading a little bit or um, listening in and, and I remember uh, listening to a program where they talked about this. The uh, I think one of the biggest issues is contractors probably not wanting to necessarily uh, build affordable housing right now what with building costs being so high and uh, if you're not going to make it up in rent, then then what's the point, right? And so what some of the contractors have been doing, though, is making like people are talking about multi generational, but they're also doing multi income uh, buildings where they'll build, uh, this is more in the cities, mind you, but they'll build a high rise with ridiculously priced penthouse apartments or condos at the very top that'll more than make up for the cost of building the entire building. And then you've got more of a mid-range kind of more affordable market rent um, in the middle. And then at the, the, the bottom, you're looking at uh, subsidized housing opportunities for people as well so you're kind of putting different income ranges within the same building and the top of the building's paying for the whole thing and the beauty mm -hmm. of this is that it's also increasing quality of life for every single person in that building because obviously you're not going to put it in like a kind of crappy neighborhood or, or whatnot right because nobody's going to want to live there in a, even if they're in a penthouse so you're kind of giving everybody the opportunity to live in a nice place that's well maintained despite their income level and contractors mm -hmm. are making back their money because they can charge exorbitant amounts for those kind of high-end uh, condos at the very top. Obviously, a high-rise might not be the thing in West Nipissing, but you could still build something kind of 
modified mm -hmm. that lakefront or not lakefront rather but uh, uh riverfront property that where the mill was might not be the worst place to look into something like that that's a very good point thanks for bringing that in yeah yeah I throw it, I mean, if, if Chris, and I throw this out to everybody, but, you know, if you're looking for any resources or one of the kind of a really, really great, you know, frankly, award-winning example of what Chris was speaking about, I'd encourage people to look at um, the Regent Park uh, redevelopment in 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 Toronto. Um, the, you know, it's not to, it's not to say that it wasn't a project without controversy, but in terms of a project that was really kind of one accolades for how they, um, um, integrated different socioeconomic groups um into into uh into one one large development and all the way from kind of market rate housing as well as geared to income and community or social housing it's a it's a really it's a really interesting example that a lot of jurisdictions are uh, are, are are looking at so it's uh, anyway it's chris you've raised some very kind of interesting points around um the economics around it as well too and the only other comment i'd make on it is you know there's there's actually developers out there that really you know a subset of developers that specialize in provision of 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 of, of affordable housing and of, of subsidized housing and in in geared to income housing um it's almost like a subset specialty to actually make the economics work so it's a the points are very well taken because it's it's a very interesting kind of area of 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 housing development well and it's just thinking practically in the sense that like i mean we're it's it's capitalism we, we're not going to yeah. get rid of it overnight uh maybe ever <laughs> so i mean you got to think practically right that's right i see a uh, nicole oui, bonjour. Um, bonjour. I am um, Nicole St. George. I am the HR manager for DSI Underground. We are a manufacturing company uh, who operates um, on Toulouse Crescent, just um, coming into Sturgeon Falls. Um, as the HR manager, I struggle with filling a lot of our vacancies. Uh, we are a small town. Um, we are we continue to grow and it's very difficult to attract new people to town. Um, or to even retain them when there's no housing. Um, we've had a lot of employees de deny or or um, withdraw their withdraw their candidacy because um, they didn't have any place to live. Um, so again, we're trying to help grow and develop the the community in the town, and we want to remain there. But with the the consistent demand uh, for our products. Um, we don't want to have to leave the town, but we may have to just because we can't we can't get employees, and a lot of it is due to uh, no housing. Um, so another thing too is the transportation. So we get a lot of employees that are interested, but they can't even get a ride to work, um, and they it's still too far for them to walk. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to get some kind of bus system going, even if it's small, um, to allow people to move around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're still making a decent wage and uh, I could really see um, a benefit in in building like an apartment complex due to the to the large amount of people looking for housing. Um, and even you look on Toulouse Crescent, um, there's lots of land there and you think like if how how many people I have to I just increase my headcount by 20 people in one month and I can barely even fill two positions. Um, so if I had all of those things, I it would all work together. And at the same time, we would keep people in Sturgeon Falls. We would grow the economy and people are spending money in, in the town and 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 then we 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 grow and we um, we can apply for even more programs um, through the government. Um, anyhow, I'm just um, I'm concerned because I a big part of of attracting people is having has having housing. Merci. Mm. Thank you for raising this issue again about um, employee retention and. Um, challenges because of the lack of proper housing adapted to the people who would move to Sturgeon Falls for this. Exactly. 
And I appreciate that, you know, I appreciate the representation of the business community as well too, Nicole, um, just kind of, you know, helping us understand the interconnectivity of the issue, I think is 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 really important and bringing that perspective to the table. So we appreciate you coming out to share those ideas tonight. And when you say you're concerned, that's why we're here, is to hear what these concerns are and to hear some of these potential solutions. That's why we're here as well, is we're concerned about West Nipissing and we want to see what West Nipissing succeed. So appreciate those thoughts. Guillaume, I see Bruno, you've got your hand up um, and, and Guillaume, I'm wondering maybe if I think some chat has been happening, if you wanted to perhaps share some of those chats. Yeah, for sure. Well, if Bruno wants to speak so the yeah. highlights anyway, and that's sure how busy it's been. But if you want to provide at least the highlights. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, let me just uh, scroll a bit up. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going up. So by the way, um, Joanne said in the chat, and she is right, there is a meeting tomorrow as to what to do with the old mill site. So for those of you who are interested in uh, talking and learning more about this project, you're more than welcome to come tomorrow. To It's uh, the same hour, uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So uh, for the comments regarding the question, as uh, Justin said, West Nipissing could request developers to build a multiplex in each new subdivision. And uh, yeah, also regarding employee retention, uh, Isabel said this, the same problem is uh, going on with medical practitioners. So uh, it's difficult to retain them in uh, the community. As uh, Justin said, geared to income housing is necessary. And uh, that, that's pretty much about it. Uh, um, wait, wait, I, I'll just scroll up. Uh, th there's been a it's lot a going on in the chat. I, I'm super sorry, I'm trying. <laughs> it. I'm just trying to find uh, everything. So um, people see in uh, 20 years, there will be more community housing as in shared multi-generational housing, not just family, but also people matched through social services, as well as car sharing, more sharing period, because no one can any longer be wasteful. And uh, another person commented, I think in Switzerland or Norway, they built a community of tiny houses for people with Alzheimer's. And uh, I think I would like to see an area built up of tiny homes for people of all ages, and for those just starting out and those who no longer need a big house or just couples with no children. Great. So that that's pretty much it, Paul. It's wonderful. Thanks, Guillaume. Yeah, wonderful. Um, does Bruno, Bruno, est-ce que vous voulez toujours intervenir? Would you still like to uh, share something with us? Sure, can you hear me okay? Yes, absolutely. Sorry, I had to move on location. Um, yeah, it's not really related to housing. It's more about the mobility. Um, I've heard from somebody I, at one of our past sessions, and I apologize, I can't give them credit, but I heard that some, some municipalities to bridge the transportation gap between communities or for housing reasons have this kind of like taxi allocation credit, like, and I may, I don't have a, a quick reference, but like it was like a $15 subsidy towards transportation in your day in order to be able to assist with mobility, but it was done on a, um, municipality basis and not necessarily an employer basis or something like that. So that might just be a way to that could help bridge some of the housing needs if there was some type of mobility credits um, with transportation. So uh, you, that would be facilitated by the municipality rather than the private sector. Is that what you're suggesting? That yeah, I believe there was a, it was a, a some municipality somewhere that's doing this. I'll try to find the okay. resource. Uh, reference yeah, that's really. Try to share. Yeah, that would be great. If I can, I think, I think it was in Innisfil, um, the municipality of Innisfil, which is outside Barrie. Um, the actual municipality offered subsidized Uber uh, for mm. people to travel back and forth to Barrie for work. Was one of the examples that I had read about. Um, and it made it more affordable because for their community, like in ours, um, public transit from a number standpoint um, doesn't work. Like it's just off of 
it's not within the means of the municipality within what we we are paying in taxes right now but if you look for um innisfil and uber i can't remember all the details but i know that they uh did a program where they were um, offering subsidies for uber rides thank you i think you. you're correct on that one i, I believe it was innisfil yeah I, I think you're right so I guess that what we're hearing is some concerns also about the transportation uh, challenges and that for 2042, many of you think that some of the, the gaps and the needs need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to make a little comment on that. Um, one thing I noticed with a lot of social housing, they put it on the outskirts of town. And these are usually the very people that do not have transportation. Mm -hmm. And you have to access, uh, like uh, speaking from a personal basis, pre-COVID, I was always picking up people that were walking home with uh, with grocery bags, ask them, do you need a lift? Sometimes they'd have small children with them. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, but that's fairly typical in this town. People just do that. Um, but post-COVID, now we don't do that anymore. COVID changed a lot of things that isolated people even further. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have to also take that into consideration. A lot of the helping hand kind of stuff that happens in the small community um, is a little bit more difficult for people to do nowadays. But I am saying that if it is about housing, uh, to re-examine this habit of always building social housing on the outskirts of a community because those people are exactly the people that have mobility issues. Great. So location, 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 super important. Yeah, that's a very good point. Thank you, Isabel. Any other final thoughts? And we might move on to our last big question of the evening. Guillaume, is there any other thing in the chat or any other questions people wanted to ask or ideas on this particular question? Yeah, sure. Well, Guillaume. in regard to building uh, housing on the outskirts of the city, Joanne said that the housing, uh, sorry, Justin said that West Nipissing covers a large area uh, with Sur Sturgeon Falls being the hub, and we cannot lose our agricultural lands to housing needs. So this gives the the need to really more concentrate housing in the in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Joanne said that there is a 24 hours shuttle service and delivery designated safe rides to where you need to go and back home. Uh, so she gives also a phone number. So for everyone who needs it, uh, there it is. Okay. And also. Joanne says also the housing in field is difficult because there's no grocery stores there and if no vehicle you are stuck. Great. And Isabel, I see you've got your hand up. Is that um, is that a leftover from a previous or did you have another idea that you wanted to share before we move on? Uh, no, that I left that up, but um, in response oh. to uh, Joanne, I just like to say uh, just keep making friends like <laughs> <laughs> Make friends wherever you go because we are going to depend on each other. You got it. You got it. So with it, we'll maybe move on to our last big question of the evening. Um, is it, we are at about 7.30, so we've got about, about a half hour left in our discussion this evening. And again, I just want to reiterate on behalf of our team, we just really appreciate the, the rich nature of the discussion and the ideas that people are sharing. I know it can sometimes be intimidating to kind of share your thoughts and ideas or ask a question in front of a large group of, uh, of, your, of, 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 of your community, but uh, we really do appreciate you. Uh, you really do appreciate your participation. So the last question we have for you this evening is what solutions do you, uh, pardon me, what do you think are solutions to ensuring that we have a good supply of housing? So with the previous questions, we were kind of talking about kind of ideas to, uh, um, um, uh, 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 pardon me, the, the end state that we would like to see, more townhouses, more multi-generational housing, more geared to income housing, but now we're, we're, we're really looking at kind of the methods 
um, about how do we get there. And we've covered some of those topics in, in some of the previous questions. So again, I don't want anybody to be bound necessarily by 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 these questions, but uh, but if you uh, you know again you're always more than welcome to share any ideas whether they be but whether it be solutions or whether they be um, methods themselves. But uh, we turn it over to the ta the table over to this crowd again. That if you have any ideas on 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 some programs on strategies on uh, and and uh, that 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 you think would help with the provision and supply of housing it'd be great to hear. And I know that I did see somebody pop something into the chat. So Guillaume, I might turn to you right away if you wanted to. Uh, Tackle that first that first answer. Yeah, for sure. Well, Nic Nicole said the town can possibly guarantee builders occupancy for apartments, rooms, townhouses. This may encourage them to build in the community. Thanks so much for that. Any other thoughts around this question? I know that this might be probably one of the more difficult questions of the evening. Um, but there's anybody else would like to, to offer some suggestions. We have talked about incentives. We have talked about property standards. We have talked about safety issues. Um, Isabel just said in the chat that uh, she thinks there is a building boom going on right now, but uh, mm -hmm. for a higher bracket. So for higher income people. Mm -hmm. It's certainly, you know, one of the and maybe this is a, you know, an opportunity to build on what what Isabel was saying as well, too. And it's it's one of the sub questions or ideas that we've thrown down on the board for this group to consider. What I found was kind of interesting for some of the answers that we were hearing from this crowd. Um, and, you know, and again, this is this is by no means a, a, a criticism, but um, Quite often when we're talking about housing, we often hear about issues around red tape, um, around, you know, uh, it's slow to get development approvals, they're costly, and therefore uh, development is costly. Um, you know, not that necessarily, maybe we do have some builders and developers in, in, our, in our group tonight, but um, we haven't heard much about that from from the um, from the group, and I'm just wondering if anybody has any comments on that about what they see as maybe some of the issues related to to even just private sector housing provision in the, in the community. Isabel. Okay, so um, I I do attend the planning board meetings um, they could, uh, on Zoom and. Uh, I think that this town is actually pretty good with uh, when it comes to things like red tape. Uh, mm -hmm. They're very busy right now. Um, they're talking about hiring another person to help because of all the interest in West Nipissing. Um, people are like there's real demand for land as well as uh, as housing in town. So. Uh, People know that they can sell their properties, so they but they have to be assured that they have a property or a house at the other end. So uh, we're experiencing the same thing that is happening right across uh, uh, the province. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's also we're getting a lot of new people in the community. That's also going to change the the way the community works. Um, I don't think people mm -hmm. realize yet how how much that's going to change uh, things around here. Um, and, uh, you know, everything, the social structures, I think the town is, from what I see, is they really want to accommodate um, what's happening in that area. I've heard many councillors, you know, a new project has just been approved for 12 homes, um, not that far from me. Uh, there's building all along the canal and like there's all the outskirts are like really booming um, mm -hmm. with lots being sold. So I'm just thinking that um, it's not as bad maybe as it is in other areas, like more built up areas. I think this uh, this town is really pro uh, this particular endeavor. Yep. Housing is a real issue. Appreciate that. Katie? 
Um, yeah, I'd agree with Isabel. I'm also one of those boring people that actually watches planning committee meetings. Um, and I find that they're actually pretty efficient at uh, getting the approvals through. And I think that staff from what I've heard from developers is very good at working with them to make sure that they're not going to hit the roadblocks and the red tape uh, when their applications do come up. So I, I don't think it's the red tape as much uh, in this town. Um, uh, and, you know, the other thing that has happened is that our official plan was actually due for its 10-year uh, update uh, during mm -hmm. COVID. So we're a couple of years behind on that. And with the updating of the official plan, um, the urban service boundaries are going to be expanded, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are actually uh, one of the first, uh, or sorry, one of the only municipalities in Northern Ontario that actually posts population growth. Many uh, mm -hmm. municipalities in Northern Ontario are posting declines in population. Um, so there are more people moving here and that has been consistent uh, from when I've been watching the census data, which is probably 2011, um, and which would have been when the, the last official plan was kind of started. So, you know, when the new council gets in and we start looking at things like the official plan, um, the, the approvals become easier once, you know, say a rural property is converted into an R1, R2, R3, R4, as far as getting uh, denser developments approved and seeing where those next lines for water and sewer and city services are going to be extended. So, you know, it, I, I just don't see the red tape as much of mm -hmm. a problem from who, the people I've talked to um, as perhaps other issues. And I don't know what those That's are. Yeah, no, that's 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 great to hear. Um, and you know, it's a it's a um, it may you know, and it very well may not be an issue in the community. It's certainly what we've been hearing this evening. Um, but uh, I thought I'd raise it just the same. Um, and just on a totally side note, I would never consider anybody that listens to planning committee meetings as an urban planner. I would never consider anybody that listens to planning committee meetings to be boring. Um, I consider those individuals to be exciting and lively people. And so uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate your engagement on that, KT, but I just wanted to add that small comment near the end. <laughs> You have anything getting populated in the chat box there, Guillaume, that you you could share? Uh, yes, a few things. Joanne said that we need a men's shelter, lots of building, but for what income bracket? And uh, Cassandra said that there was an increase in population of 11.19% over the last four census. So that's quite a lot. Crazy. So uh, that's pretty much it, Paul. Awesome. Any of the thoughts from the group? Katie? Sorry, I'll just add one more thing because I've been talking to all. somebody who who is um, uh, currently living in geared to income housing. Um, and this mm -hmm. person identified a, a real need for the smaller units for all people, uh, men, women, whatever either that are transitioning between family life, like uh, their kids are empty nest, um, but they don't qualify for the senior units at this point. So, you know, if you're 45 and your kids are gone off to university, um, there's not a lot of places for you to go because you've got to be 55 plus to qualify for the seniors units. And there's, there's no real single occupancy or couple occupancy units um, available. So the particular person I know is actually in a three bedroom townhouse and um, she her kids are probably three or four years out of the nest, um, but she's still occupying a family unit because they have nowhere else to put her. So that is, mm -hmm. that is a unit that represents a family that is not being housed. Um, like mm -hmm. she's over housed right now and she knows it. Um, but there's nowhere for her to go because any of the smaller units, she doesn't qualify because of age. So there seems to be a gap in that, we'll call it 45 to 55 or 40 to 60, 
Um, if you're not uh, a family or, or your kids have already left home, there seems to be a real gap kind of in that area as far as having, you know, reasonably priced um, uh, living units. And for this woman mm-hmm. in, in particular, she is employed and, you know, she's paying pretty close to what the market rent is on the unit. So if she could mm-hmm. get into a smaller unit and pay less rent, it would really help her financially as well. So, you know, it's uh, I think there's there is a gap there that we talk about seniors and we talk about families, but there there are other people um, that just kind of fall in the cracks between those two kind of main groups when we talk about housing needs. Thank that, you. That issue. No, I appreciate you raising that. You know, that issue around kind of misalignment of housing um, is is a trend that we're seeing in Ontario and Quebec where, just as you had stated, Katie, where um, we have people who have now become empty nesters, but because of the issues around affordability and also supply of smaller living accommodations are essentially stuck in these three and four bedroom homes, are overhoused, and can't they don't have other units to move into that are, and are not freeing up those larger those larger um those larger dwellings for for those families that is a real issue and it's really really well documented um particularly you know if you if, if anybody's ever looking up kind of the discussions around what they refer to as the missing middle um you, you'll often you'll often see that a lot but they i really appreciate you raising that point kt The thoughts or ideas that people want to share anything in the chat? Well, uh, we have uh, quite some few things in the chat. Um, sure. So, well, people seems to agree with the overhouse issue with the people living in uh, houses that are way too big for their needs mm-hmm. and can't move because uh, there's no there's no housing supply for them. Also, uh, we didn't really talk about uh, the homelessness problem. Uh, I've seen some uh, some messages in the chat that said that uh, homelessness is really a struggle in uh, West Nipissing, and uh, the majority of homeless people are people from uh, West Nipissing and Sturgeon Falls. So uh, maybe if you have, uh, well, this is a, this is an issue. Yeah. Would anybody like to build on any of those comments around homelessness and the issue that they're seeing in the community? Joan says, my son is homeless and I and I have been told he must go to this city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is one of the this is a, a, a real big challenge that we see often in smaller communities and rural communities in in in, in Ontario and Quebec. Um, where uh, the you know the, the the service the support services that are needed um, for people that are experiencing homelessness at whatever stage they are at um, um, doesn't exist and are often being told by social services that the obvious solution is well you need to go to the city to receive those services so that um, that you know that that that's a real issue and it will be an issue in places like West Nipissing um, and it, just as it will be in, in elsewhere in kind of these small to medium sized communities so appreciate you sharing that um, that personal story. Well people seem to be sharing uh, quite some few stories here in the chat about uh, homelessness. Uh, Isabel said I heard there is a, a new homeless encampment behind Park Street uh, but she didn't confirm. Mm-hmm. She can't confirm. Mm-hmm. And just like I said, mm-hmm. yes, neighbor has someone living in their car in their driveway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is a mm-hmm. real issue and uh, that needs to be taken care of. Really appreciate the group raising these issues. Katie, did you have a leftover hand up or are you putting your hand back up, Katie? Sorry, that was still up from before. I apologize. No worries, no worries. I apologize. I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't sure if I saw it go off and on or whether it just was left up. No worries at all. Well, perhaps you know we're 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 drawing to the in closer to the end of this. But Guillaume, I I think a few more people entered in the chats. Maybe we could read out some of those those comments or questions, and then uh, and then we can move on to to the next phase of the um this discussion, which is a little bit about next steps and wrap up. Yeah, for sure. 
Uh, Joanne said that the funding for Nipissing District is spent mostly in North Bay rather than implementing a way to share TGE funds, lifting the pressure on uh, uh, NB. <laughs> And Chris said that he recently spoke to someone in uh, DNSSAB. Uh, they mentioned mm -hmm. that all these places for overnight housing, etc., were there, but all this stuff is in North Bay, not in West Nipissing. Oh, okay. yeah. Th thank you, Joanne. NB is North Bay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's great. Um, and uh, so, Isabel just said, so, sorry, Paul. Yeah. Isabel just said that yeah. many homeless, if you talk to them, they prefer West Nipissing for uh, many reasons. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate those um, those thoughts, and again, the thoughts and stories, and and particularly this discussion around around homelessness. And I, I'll be I'll be quite frank, you know, the discussion around homelessness is something that we could likely spend hours discussing as a group. Um, Paul, uh, Katie has just raised her her hand again and Chris also. Just, so oh, thanks for catching. I don't yeah. know if you want to. Great, great. Absolutely. Let's let's tackle those two questions. Thanks for catching that. <clears throat> OK, so with with homelessness, like it's been identified for for some time that you know, uh, there needs to be some kind of emergency shelter system within North or within West Nipissing. Um, and, and people have been saying it for a long time because we do have a women's shelter uh, uh, organization here, but there is nothing that serves men. Um, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to hearken back many, many, many years before the Chateau was built. And we had the same kind of issue uh, with North Bay in that um, at that time, if you were a senior and you needed full nursing care uh, support, you had to go to North Bay. And one of the huge issues was uh, for our Francophone population, they would not be guaranteed service uh, in, uh, in their mother language because it wasn't necessarily going to be available in North Bay. And as one of my friends says, if I'm sick, I want to be sick in French. Um, mm -hmm. And... <laughs> And, you know, it took a lot of lobbying. It took many years of going to a provincial and federal government and through the, the kind of regional funding systems. Um, but they did finally manage to advocate to get the Chateau built here. Um, and I think, um, you know, individually we can say we need a men's uh, emergency shelter, emergency housing in the community, but it that's that's a problem that's not going to be tackled unless um, it is a priority and there is a group formed and there there is active lobbying um, to get it you know like we have 15,000 people or so in West Nipissing mm -hmm. and that makes up a fairly significant portion of the catchment area for um, the North Bay like the, the the Social Services Administration Board and you know I, I think there's a good argument to be made that we have we should have right to have some of that funding and some of those services available in our community. So I just I just wanted to remind people that we have done it before as a community. We have succeeded in conquering these kinds of challenges before, um, but it is a kind of very focused effort and it's not it's never overnight, you know, you gotta, you gotta yell it a lot of people before, not yell, but you know, you gotta make a lot of noise before um, people start to listen to you. You really gotta clang the pots and pans and, and make them stand up and take notice. And it's, it's not one agency or another, or one organization or the municipality, but it, it's gonna be something that has to be done cooperatively. So that's just what I'd like to add. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, I, I the only comment I probably make on that is, you know, when we talk about and we've just kind of gone through this discussion around, you know, methods and, and tactics and strategies and, and it, we can never discount the, um, you know, the impact of lobbying. Um, and, you know, and when we talk about, you know, the municipality lobbying upper levels of government for additional funding, and these are very, very valid strategies and tactics that are often incorporated into housing strategies. So I appreciate you kind of raising that idea of, of you know, we need to make a lot of noise and people need to hear us and to hear what our issues are. Um, that, that That's an important part of this process and it, it shouldn't be discounted. So I appreciate you raising that.
and, and maybe we'll go to we can go to Chris and then perhaps we can uh, we'll, we'll continue on with the wrap up and next steps. But Chris, the mic is yours. Hey, um, just to kind of I guess it's going to touch on a lot of the same kind of points, but um, that's the thing with the like I like I mentioned before, I spoke with somebody at the uh, uh, social services administration board here, and that's what they were mentioning is that the early steps of the continuum and those kind of last steps of the continuum are pretty much what's missing in West Nipissing at the very like mm -hmm. the, the most, right? So those uh, emergency shelters or overnight shelters and and whatnot, there's nothing here. They're all in North Bay, mm -hmm. you know. And they're saying, yeah, we have mm -hmm. these. They're great. All in North Bay doesn't really help people mm -hmm. here necessarily. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have those retirement homes and end of life care uh, homes that are also not available which we have oshaw too but like people have been mentioning the uh the wait list is incredibly long uh odds are you're mm -hmm. probably not going to make it in there um so a lot of people have been moving to north bay for that regards as well and to kind of bring up uh homelessness with all of this is the fact that yeah like there's you know isabel mentioned before that the homeless people want to stay in west nipissing or they they prefer west nipissing well that's yeah they they they, they're from here, of course, they prefer it here. And I mean, one of the big mm. issues with having all these places for them in North Bay is the fact that you're taking somebody who's homeless and being homeless in a lot of cases usually entails some kind of mental health struggle. You're displacing them now. And it's mm -hmm. just, that's just piling on at that point. That's, that's, it's almost abusive, I would consider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I just want to point out that a few people have have pointed out themselves that the, the French language uh, is also a factor of, uh, as to a reason, main reason why people would want to stay in West Nipissing instead of going to North Bay, for example, just to mm -hmm. be, yeah, be able to live in their, in their preferred language. Absolutely. Um, Isabel, I see that you put your hand up and we can we can certainly take that kind of one last comment or question and then we can move on. Go ahead, Isabel. Okay. I, I just wanted to add to what Molly was saying is that what a lot of people don't understand is that um, everybody benefits from uh, from being designated bilingual community and the French language services because none of those services are denied to anybody on the basis of language, but in fact, they get increased funding because of that. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why we have a hospital that is is uh, is a good hospital. We have all these services in West Nipissing that yes, they've been struggled for, they've been fought for, but everybody benefits because of them. So um, mm -hmm. I'm a huge, as an Anglophone, I'm a huge advocate for uh, maintaining uh, French language services throughout the district because it really benefits everybody. Definitely agree. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. On that note, uh, you know, and that's a, I think it's a great kind of note to to perhaps end this discussion on. Um, we'll, we'll maybe move into this day to, to the wrap up into the next steps. Just we're about uh, eight minutes away from eight. Um, so with this, I do want to revisit kind of um, the, the, the timeline that we do have for the project, just to kind of reiterate uh, where we are in the process. So as I had mentioned at the beginning of the session, um, that we uh, we had started this project back in April with doing the background work, and it really began in earnest in June when we had had our staff workshop. We've begun the preparation of the the background report. I do want to add an extra plug for the housing survey. So if you haven't filled out the housing survey, if you do go on to um, the municipality's website, you will find a link to it, and we'd encourage you to just as you guys have been so free in sharing your ideas tonight, we'd encourage you to provide some more targeted feedback through the housing survey. Um, so the next steps in this process after we do wrap up the, the initial public engagement is we will be developing those visions and guiding principles and we'll be developing the actual um, the actual action plan or strategy itself. And again, this will be made available to the public to um, to uh, to uh, to review and to participate in and to provide feedback in. So. With this, I, I am going to pause one last time if there are any other questions or, or comments that anybody has before um, before we move into just kind of the general um, wrap up. But is there any other questions or comments that people have on the process or or anything that was discussed here tonight and we can try to field an answer to it? Uh, 
I'm going to call this the one, the last call for uh, for for questions or or comments. If we don't see any. any. Um, with this, you know, I I just want to take a a, a moment to um. Um, it, to, to thank really everybody around the table for taking the time, particularly during the summertime, um, to come out and spend a couple hours with us. And, and, I, and I, I'm hoping where you guys are is a beautiful evening, certainly where myself, Guillaume and Mally is. It's a gorgeous evening outside and I, I hope you guys have the same weather. So we really do appreciate you taking the time um, during the summertime to have this discussion. Um, it really, really was, and I mean it sincerely, a, a rich discussion and an interesting discussion. Um, um, we have learned a lot about the issues and the challenges and the opportunities that we see in West Nipissing. Um, and I want to stress that how important this consultation has been um, and will be to the development of the, uh, of the strategy. Um, so certainly on behalf of our team um, with Guillaume and Mali, we want to say a big merci and thank you for everybody coming out tonight to share your ideas. Um, on behalf of um, of, of Colliers, um, and I I did notice that we do have them. Um, we do have Hodan Osem Osman from Colliers who's joined us this evening, and and so thank you for coming out, Hodan, to join this discussion. Um, and I also see Cassandra from the municipality, who I didn't want to forget was also in this audience tonight. And Cassandra, if you wanted to say a hello or a, um, a few words. Absolutely. I actually just wanted to say a quick thank you um, to Paul, Mali, Guillaume and Hodan for your time tonight. And also just thank you to everybody for participating. It's been such a great discussion. And I think that I speak for everyone when I say that we've gathered a lot of really great information that's really going to be useful for the studies. So again, just a big thank you to everybody. And for anyone who's doubling down and coming back tonight, uh, we look forward to see you again tomorrow. Thanks so much for those thoughts, Cassandra. I really appreciate it. So, again, on behalf of everybody uh, with uh, with the Republic, with uh, with the Municipality of West Nipissing, with Colliers, we want to give you a, a great big thank you again for for participating and sticking with uh, with us and sharing your great great ideas and thoughts. And we do wish you a really really wonderful evening. And if you just as Cassandra said, if you are are brave enough and want to do this all over again, you're welcome to join us <laughs> tomorrow when we discuss the. Uh, the 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 the, the develop, redevelopment of the former mill site, which is um, going to be another, we hope and, and and we trust is going to be another really great discussion. But on behalf of our team, merci et uh, bonne soirée, and thank you very much, and have a great evening, everyone. Merci à tous, uh, une très belle soirée à tout le monde. Thank you. It was a pleasure.